Dwyer, Carlos and Greta. Amen. Good morning, church. Please stand this morning as we prepare our hearts to give God praise and to glorify his name. This morning we open with Psalms 146, verse 1 through 4. And the Lord says, it's always good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to God while I have been. Put not your trust in princesses, in the Son of Man, in whom there is no salvation. As the word said, we need to put our trust in the one and only Lord and God Jesus Christ. So this morning again, as we gather to give God praise, he said we're two or three gathering his name, he's always in the midst. So let's pour our hearts and praise and thanks to him all the wonderful blessings that he has poured down upon us. So let us pray. For Lord, we thank you this, this morning as we come before you with a humble heart to give you praise and to thank you for all that you have done. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of salvation. We thank you that you, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, came down on earth and died for us that we might have life and have it more abundantly. You prepare a place for us, dear Lord Jesus, that where you are, we also will spend time with you. And we thank you. Thank you for bringing us here safely this morning. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to touch those that are sick and shedding. Touch those that are sick and amiss, Heavenly Father, your healing hand will touch them. Touch those, for Lord, that are having a spirit of depression this morning, that your joy be with them. Those that have anxiety, that your peace will be upon them. And those that are not sure, we we'll seek you, Heavenly Father, that the Holy Spirit speak through them. Touch Pastor Chuck as he delivered the word. And open our lips, Father Lord, that we will give you praise. Know, dear God Jesus, that we serve a living God. So again, we give you all the praise and all the glory for bringing us here this morning. And in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. 
our praises unto our matchless King. Rise among us, Lord, let it rise and be a sweet Savior unto your nostrils because you're our everything. Jesus is everything. He's more than life to me, Jesus is. from the 
our God is right there with us. Hallelujah. And he's mighty.
real quick, please. Real quick. Pastor, can you come on? Um, the song we're about to sing is Holy. And holy literally means set apart. And I, I just want the, the, the elders to come down here. And I want everybody that, all right, here we go. God said, be holy because I am holy. One of the ways we can be holy and set apart is by loving one another. And that's what sets us apart from other people. Amen. That's what Amen. sets us Hallelujah. apart from the world. The Bible says they will know you by your love for one another. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want everybody to take their time to find somebody to pray for. Preferably not somebody that you know. And go up to them and pray for them. And love them. Because this is how... God wants to see us. And this is how this, the world will know that we are his. Hallelujah. By our love for one another. Yes. yes. And when we have love for one another, it will set us apart. And, it, and that's what God wants. He wants us to be holy. He said, I am holy. I loved you. Hallelujah. That's why I went to the cross for you. I love you. So be holy, for I am holy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, if you don't feel comfortable praying with somebody or somebody around you, the elders and the pastor are right here to pray with you if you need it. Amen? Amen. Amen. So please take the time now. Find someone. Find someone to love on so you can be set apart and God can love through you and on you. Amen? I will lift my voice and I will sing. I will sing.
feet set apart to be with him. Because when we are set apart, we are set apart to him. When you take the time to love on each other, it says, when two or three are gathered in my name, here I am. God is here. If you want to see the presence of God, you have to love one another. You have to cherish one another. You have to look out for one another. Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, feed my sheep. He asked him again, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Love me. He said, yes, sir. He was like, why are you asking me? He was like, feed my sheep. We all have a responsibility to feed each other. We are all to be like Peter in this incident and feed sheep. And let the presence of God be in our midst.
you glad about it? It's coming back for me. And what a day of rejoicing that will be. He's coming back for me. Just point to yourself and say, He is, He's coming back. Presence of the Lord. Yes. Glory be unto your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord, and I pray that you are too. This is the day that He has made, and we will, we will rejoice and be glad in it. If we happen to have any first time visitors here this morning, we would just like to acknowledge you and uh, just ask you your name and where you're from. If you could stand on your feet if you're here for the very first time. No? Okay. Well, we're so glad to have each of you. Somebody look at somebody and say, good to see you this morning. Good to see y'all this morning. Good to see you. Good to see you. Just in case you didn't pray with somebody, just say, good to see you this morning. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Amen. All right. If you would turn with me to your announcements in the back of your bulletin, and then we have a quick insert and a special announcement at the end. Our quarterly business meeting is today. Today, 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 after this service, please, please make sure that you do that. We will also be celebrating the April birthdays, so we will have cake in the fellowship hall. If that is something that uh, will make you come to the meeting, make sure you go. Get you a piece of cake and stay a little while longer. Amen. <laughs> Great Expect Expectation Luncheon. Now, we love the women of the Great Expectation. Um, and the women's ministry will be hosting a pre-Mother's Day luncheon on Saturday, May 11th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. for these young women. Now, as Eric said, we should love on one another. 
and we shall we'll be known because of his love amen so these women they have special needs and we want to show them God's love through us so make sure that you come women women make sure that you come we are asking for volunteers and hostesses to provide uh, fellowship for these women and their children if you have any questions please see sister Stephanie Mathis or sister Sharon Bibby or deaconess Pam Epps and their numbers are there if you want to call them Women's Day Sunday, woohoo! It is our very first Women's Day Sunday, May 19th, during our second service, and we are asking our women to wear white with pink accents. Now, women, we know how white can be sometimes. Sometimes it's not so flattering, so make sure you handle that, and I know you know what I mean. Praise the Lord. I hope you understand that. Um, please make sure you come, and if you have any, uh, any, um, other questions, please see Deaconess Pam Epps. Uh, you can read the next one at your leisure and the following one at your leisure. And the sick and shut in, we always want to make sure that we are praying for our sick and shut in. So please let our elders and Pastor Chuck know about the sick and shut in so we can make sure we visit them. The following message you can also read at your leisure. We're going to move swiftly. Annual Youth Mission Trip, July 6th through the 12th. If you have any questions about that, you can see Sister Joy Porter concerning that. Um, the Sight and Sound trip is coming up, and that's in October, so you can also read that. And our college students, the men's ministry wants to make sure that if we know of any college students that has a need or is willing and wants to be contacted, please make sure you see Elder Cliff Headley concerning that. Okay, I believe that's it other than our special announcement by Sister Linda. Uh, for our missions. Amen? Amen. And Junior Church, you may be excused at this time. Thank you, Sister Steph. Appreciate that. Good morning, Church. Good morning. I have uh, a couple of things. The first thing is we want to do a project for involving Habitat for Humanity. Our sister, um, Erica Stewart and her husband, Michael, have been granted a house through Woo! Habitat for Humanity. <clears throat> However, Habitat requires them to contribute 200 hours of work themselves. And the 200 hours, not only them, it involves family and friends. So Erica has asked us to come along beside them to help to contribute to the 200 hours. I don't have the exact date and time, but the dates and times are, are kind of flexible right now. So what I'm asking you to do is to put your name and phone number on this pad that's gonna be um, out in the North X, and I'll contact you about, we'll, you'll have a couple of options maybe a Wednesday or a Friday or maybe sometime a Saturday, and I'll ask you which, um, you know, which time would work for you. The house is in Plainfield, and um, she is looking forward to uh, moving in, and we, have, we will come along beside her and help. Okay? Amen. The next thing Amen. is I, I don't want you to forget our one great hour of sharing. Um, here is a little coin box. You can drop your coins in. Every little bit helps. And here is an envelope that you can put your checks or your dollars in. And here's a little teeny little clip that shows you what we're doing. A lot of times, guys, we cannot go when we see a disaster. But our, if we contribute to a big fund, a great fund, the money can go and help um, those people who are in need at that particular time. Every five seconds, a person is displaced, forced to leave their home in order to escape war, persecution, or natural disaster. Today, there are almost 60 million refugees worldwide. Here is one of their stories. Harabai 
Tanzania tufavuye Tanzania tuza muri America dufashwa gimunsi Nabyukura kubijanye no busima ko muri Afrika mu makambi ubuzima bwa hari yaburagomoye gukura abona nko muri UN twa twafata injya nkeye bikaboneka na yuko bategerezwa kurya rimwe ku munsi kubita bagira ngute gusanga baguma batukubagurane ari ngorane nyine mu bantu Ama muri yo kambi nyene eh igira gatanu niho leta ya Tanzania yashatse gutahana abarundi bakimbize babarundi hama abadashaka gutaha iratwumvitsa itwemerera yuko tuzoza muri America ngo rero hari umuntu bere na 14 mu bajyana ibwo leta ya America yatwemeye hama mu kugira ngo bidusegurire urugendo nuko dushobora kuza gushika muri America urugendo rushikirwa Their story is just one of millions. You can help provide hope to those who have none by giving to one great hour of sharing. Thank you. Um, you can give these envelopes to the, to the ushers if you have them, or we'll give this to the ushers. Thank you for your support. I hope you listened closely. We've been talking about loving one another, and we know um, that there's a saying that charity begins at home and spreads about abroad. We are a very mission-based church. Uh, growing up, I grew up in an apostolic church, and what I knew a missionary to be was a lady who wore white, who helped you tarry for the Holy Ghost. And when I came here, I realized that we are the hands and feet of Jesus, and we can do so much more than what we think that we can do. So we will come alongside of Erica and Mike, and we will come alongside of the people that we can get to. What We take so many things things for granted. So let's make sure that we don't do that. We have an opportunity to be the hands and feet of Jesus and let's love each other, but also love other people outside of just this congregation. Amen? Amen. It is time for us to give as the Lord has given unto us with our tithes and our offering. Pastor Chuck, if you would come and pray over that. Just to come forward. And men, <clears throat> Linda Porter said something that was important, and that was that Habitat for Humanity is looking for us to help, to help Erica and her husband as they build their house. Men, I'm asking you, men, I'm asking you to contribute two or three hours so that the burden is just not on them. We can do that, and we don't have to yes it to death. We can do it. Help somebody, because we've been helped. Let us bow our heads. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come to you today on the Sunday after Resurrection Sunday, asking you to forgive us of our sins and our debts, 
and allow us to contribute to your cause, that the, our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings might be for the benefit of your kingdom and for the help that we can bestow upon others. Help us, Lord, this morning to help others. And for those who can't help, Lord, we ask them to pray. Pray so that that will be their gift, that will be their tithe, that will be their offering. But for those who can, Lord, we beseech thee. Amen.
this Sunday and next Sunday, I will be using the same sermonic text. It's what happened right after Jesus was crucified and the disciples were in a locked room. Today we will deal with one of the disciples. Next week we'll deal with Jesus as he entered that locked room. And it's what happens in that room that changes us. It's what happens in that room that makes us different. It's what we see the first time they see Jesus. I'm going to ask you to stand as I read the gospel. Please stand. Our sermonic text is from John, the gospel according to John, chapter 20, verses 19 and 20, and then 24 through 28. This is the New King James Version. Then, the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. 24. Now Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when, when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace to you. And then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands. Reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord, my God. Amen. Amen. Thus ends the reading of the gospel text. Please be seated. The title of this sermon is No Doubt. No Doubt. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and pray with me this morning. There are a couple of people I'd like to see in here who I'm sure are outside uh, with the junior church, but I just hope they can hear it. Because this sermon is meant for many of us who are in this congregation. It speaks directly to you. Bow our heads. Precious Lord, dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you come in our midst. Talk to us. Speak to us. Our hearts are open. Our ears are unstopped. Allow our minds to concentrate and focus on you. Hide me behind the cross so that they won't see me but hear you so that they will know that it is you, Lord, that we honor. It's you whom we worship. It's you whom we live in all. Give us strength and power. Restore our hope and our love. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Now, I just read to you the sermon text which gave the disciple Thomas his nickname, Doubting Thomas. Webster dis defines doubt as meaning to be uncertain or unsure about something. And secondly, to lack conviction or distrust something. But based on the scripture I just read, I wouldn't say that Thomas doubted. Rather, I would call it an outright denial. Webster, on the other hand, says that denial is the refusal to acknowledge 
the truth or reality, the reality of a statement to disavow something. So perhaps denying Thomas would, have seen, would seem to be more appropriate rather than doubting Thomas. But after thousands of years of history and Bible reading, I'm not going to argue with what we call him. I'm just going to go with doubting Thomas too. But frankly, I think that Thomas got a bad rap from Bible, from Bible readers as they began to call him Doubting Thomas. You see, if we look back over the words that Thomas spoke throughout the, the Gospels, we find that he was just a no-nonsense guy. Although Thomas rarely speaks when he does. He doesn't mince his word. He doesn't soft soak the situation. He doesn't seem to bite his tongue or hold his peace very often. The only other time that he speaks, it seems as though he's being very straightforward. Very straightforward in what he believes and what he knew. While he's named in several places in the gospel, it is in John 11, 16, that he talks. The first time is on the way to Bethany, where Mary and Martha were lamenting over the death of their brother, Lazarus. The 12 disciples know that Jesus was almost killed by the Jews of that city, so they really questioned his judgment in deciding to go back there. But Thomas, being a hard knocks, tough-minded, and the dedicated person that he was, said in rebuke of his fellow disciples, and I quote the scripture, let us go that we may die with him. Now that doesn't sound too much like a doubter, does it? Doesn't sound like a doubter to me. In fact, I would say that he showed unbelievable courage and steadfast faith. On another occasion when Jesus was speaking very cryptically to his closest friends and his disciples, friends who had given up and given away everything to be with the Lord, Thomas then tells them, no, I'm sorry, Jesus then tells them where he's going and that they know the way. They know the way to his father's house, his mansion with many rooms. Right in the beginning, Thomas says to himself, enough of this guessing game, and decides to speak up and cut to the chase, as they say. Thomas interrupts the Lord by saying, since we don't know where you're going, how can we know the way? Now, if I was to extend my understanding of the gospel and change it into a more 21st century wording or 21st century talking, Thomas probably would have said something like this. Speak plainly and clearly, Lord, and tell me where you're going with this conversation. You see, from all outside appearances, Thomas just seemed to be a no-nonsense, take the bull by the horns kind of guy. And that's probably why he wasn't hiding in the room either locked behind closed doors with those sniffling, fearful, faint-hearted disciples of Jesus. Thomas wouldn't have thought twice about staying in that room and hiding from the world. He just wouldn't have it. He just wouldn't have done it. Thomas had a certain no-frills approach to life. So when a couple of those weak-minded, whimpering followers came running over to him talking about Jesus rising from the dead, Thomas wouldn't have it. Thomas was willing to let the dead rest and starting rumors about Jesus rising from the dead really didn't do anyone any good in his mind. After all, Thomas watched him die. Thomas was there when they laid him in the grave and they, he saw his, his dead body put on that stone shelf. And as far as Thomas was concerned, dead is dead. 
so be it, amen. It was time to go back home. It was time to continue his life before that three-year hiatus he took with Jesus. And so as I said in the beginning, Thomas wasn't questioning what they said. He was trying to help them get over it. He was trying to help them to move on. You see, tell your neighbor, this is important. This is important. Thomas, hope died when Jesus died. Thomas's hope died when Jesus died. You know, Thomas is a lot like some of us. We believe and we come to church, or we say we believe and come to church, but when it really comes down to it, we're really in a state of denial. Sometimes, the way we see it, faith seems to be downright dumb. It's a dumb thing, and we're too smart for that. Faith seems to be a backwards, old-fashioned concept, and we consider ourselves too slick, too cool, too urban, too contemporary for something like that. Sometimes faith feels like the old fruit from an old tree. And we're looking for new fruit from a new source. So when we stand in faith, so when we stand in faith, we stand there feeling like idiots waiting for something to happen that others know or feel won't happen. And while we're standing there, it seems like 10 million people are watching us and giving us that weird look. You know that look? <laughs> Say what? As they pass us by. Looking at us as though they see something that we don't see. That they know something that we don't know. As though faith was dead and we were the last ones to find out. And then there's plenty of us who are the empirical evidence believers. Well, what does that mean? Well, as long as we can see it, we believe it. We have that old-fashioned Joe Friday dragnet kind of faith. The facts, ma'am. All we believe is the facts, just the facts. For those who are old enough, you'll get it. And for those who ain't, ask somebody. Our faith wavers with every wind. Our belief shakes with every turn. Our faith runs out with every failure and with each misstep in our lives that we make. But church, we must learn to live by faith. Amen? Faith says that tomorrow will be a better day. Amen? You know, we all have those days. Ain't nothing going right. I woke, woke up this morning, the first thing I did was pull up, had a cramp in my leg just trying to get up. But faith says tomorrow will be a better day. Faith says that with each failure, we're a step closer to success. Faith says that we shouldn't be afraid to step up and step out. Faith says that God will make our situation right. Or God will make us right in our situation. You know, sometimes it's not the situation that needs to change. Sometimes it's us that need to change in that situation. Amen? I want you to know that you should be saying to yourself these words. Nothing can take my faith. No one can kill my peace. Nothing can steal my joy. So we live with faith in God. Amen? Amen. And we must learn to live in faith with each other. But most of all, we must learn to live by God's faith 
in ourselves. Faith to believe that we can develop to be useful men and women of God. Here to serve God's particular purpose for, in God's unique and unusual, wonderful way. Amen? There's stuff for us to do. There's people that we need to speak to. Sometimes the only Jesus that people see is the Jesus that's in you. Ain't they in trouble? <laughs> Amen? <laughs> I'm sure that just like the disciples, we've had our hopes die. Yes, we've had our dreams dashed. And unfortunately, we've experienced some, bit, some pretty bad stuff. And for you young folks that haven't, just keep on living. It's bound to happen. Life will happen to all of us. Some people substitute that with another four-letter word. My, my, my. <laughs> Sometimes things don't pan out the way we think they should. Or maybe someone dear to us died or passed away and we didn't get a chance to say all we needed to say. I want you to know that our faith lives on. Death does not kill hope. Amen? Amen? Dreams do not die a mortal death. And likewise, our loved ones will see us again. I believe that. I believe that I'm not going to go into a box six feet underground and just stay there until the worms destroy my body and my soul. I believe that I will live again. Amen? I can't tell you the number of times I was in bad situations waiting for Jesus to forget about me or just leave me hanging out there in some ugly situation. But wouldn't you know it? God always shows up. It may not be the way I expected it, expected it and it may not be at the time I thought was most opportune. But God shows up in our lives in God's own unique and wonderful way. And he makes the situations right anyhow. He fixes it for us. You would think that by now all of us 21st century Christians would know that Christ will see us through. Christ will carry us through. No matter how bad it is, no matter how desperate we may seem, how much despair we may have upon our head and we carry on our brow, God will see us through. And he'll fix it. He'll make it right. So we must move past the point of doubt and denial. We should have moved past the point of denying God's power anyway if we only move to the point where we go, let's wait and see. Instead of saying it ain't going to happen, let's wait and see. But even with that, there's a problem. You see, the problem is that there's still doubt. And we can't be there. We can't be stuck there. Doubt questions our faith. Doubt makes unsure our end. Doubt chips away at our convictions. Doubt rocks our confidence. Doubt tries to steal our joy. Not joy for it. Just tries to steal our joy. Amen? Doubt blocks our sunlight, our S-O-N light. Doubt darkens our path. But we must learn to move beyond doubt and live with faith, undeniable, unshakable, absolutely unshakable faith. We must learn to live in the land of no doubt. 
Amen? Now say it with me. No doubt. No. One more time. No doubt. no doubt. In fact, let's do what we did a couple of Sundays ago. Every time I raise my hand, I want you to say, no doubt. Let's try it. No doubt. Come on. No doubt. All right. We won't be like Thomas. We don't need evidence. Last Sunday was a new chapter written in history by a man that died and God got him up. No doubt. No doubt. Amen. We, we believe that that man was my God. That man was Jesus, my Lord and Savior. No doubt. No doubt. Amen. We have faith in Jesus and Jesus placed his faith in us. No doubt. Come on. No doubt. Come on. No doubt. Amen. Death is not the end. Life can and will go on. No doubt. Come on. No doubt. Come on. <laughs> Ready? One more time. No doubt. All right. Dark clouds will come my way. That, that, you're right about that. Storms will, storms of life will rain upon me. But Jesus is the truth, the way and the life. No doubt. Right? No doubt. Come on. No doubt. Amen. One of these days, when my time is up, I'm going to lay my burdens down, and Jesus will come for me. No doubt. Come on. No doubt. Come on. No doubt. I will ride on gossamer wings and fly away like an eagle and float on clouds on high. No doubt. Amen? No doubt. Amen? No doubt. I will walk those streets of gold and see my God face to face. No Come on. No Amen? No Sound like a couple people had doubt. One more time. No Come on. No Come on. No Do you believe it? Yes. Amen. My family will be there. My friends will be there too. Amen. 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 But for now, I live with no doubt. I live with no fear. I live with no evidence. I just live by faith. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we have to live by faith. Sometimes we can't afford to wait for evidence. Evidence is the opposite of faith. You see, when you got evidence, you don't need faith. You can see it. And when you got faith, you don't need evidence because you already believe it. Amen? Amen? Amen. And I want you to know that faith is the substance of things hoped for. You, you heard the old saying, there's a glass, is the glass half empty or is the glass half full? Well, I want you to know if you got faith, you don't need a glass. God will supply whatever you need. Amen? Amen. 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 So as time moves on and as we come to the end of this sermon because we want to get into that into that, that, that and we are his creation he remembers that we are but dust and because we are wonderfully made by the work of his hands we can trust God in faith but we also need to trust each other you know the sad thing is God has more faith in us than often we have in him. And he's God. He knows who we are. He knows what we are. He sees us in all situations. And yet he still loves us anyway. Amen. Brian, God even loves Brian. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He looked around and said, me? Yeah. But I want you to know that there's no one like my Jesus. And because he died for me, he didn't have to. He didn't say, maybe I'll go. He went. His face was fixed towards Jerusalem. And he died for you and for me. He 
didn't have any doubt about what he was going to do. He knew from the moment of his birth that he was sent here to die a horrendous, horrible death so that you wouldn't have to. That our loved ones won't have to cry forever. That eternal damnation is not our lot. That heaven, where he is, is where we'll be. No doubt. And so, I know we're all family. But if there's one who has doubt, if there's one that needs to be assured, where are you going? Come on up and let me talk to you. Come on up and, and join this royal band of believers, this august body of Christ, and let us help you in your belief. Because we believe in you. And we want you to believe in us. Because together, we'll believe that Christ will make us better than we were yesterday. And much better tomorrow than we are today. So, is there one that needs a helping hand? You see, doubt causes us to hesitate. Doubt causes us to have unfulfilled potential. Doubt causes us never to rise to be the person that God intended. Doubt causes us to fall short of God's expectation because our own limitations were placed on us by ourselves about the what ifs. And unless you're a scientist who is paid to look at possibilities, and sometimes we just need to step out in faith and step up to God's demand on us. Come on up. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. There's no doubt that they have faith. The question is, is there any doubt in your mind? Let's bow our heads as I pray for this brother and this sister that no matter what their situation, no matter what their concerns, no matter what their circumstances or condition, that God can fix it. See, the only person that can change who we are on the inside is God through Christ Jesus. Only God, only through Jesus Christ, whose blood covers us, can we become the person that he intends us to be. And no matter how much money we have, no matter how much of an intellect we have, no matter what our social standing, we can't change us. All we can do is dress up the outside. God will fix the inside. No doubt. So, it's not a question of if God can change us. It's a question of when you come to him and lay your burdens down. Him changing you to be the person that he wanted you to be. And if it's good enough for God, it's good enough for me. Amen? I want you to know that your conviction, your strength, your hope extends beyond what you just did a few minutes ago by taking those few steps over here. It extends into your life and it will go 10,000 years into the future because God has called you to step forward and be the person that he wants you to be. Just give him a chance. God will change you to the princess that you really are and the king that you were meant to be. Amen? May the Lord bless you and may he keep you and 
may his countenance shine upon you and give you peace and give you strength and give you hope. In Jesus' name we pray. his hand and there's no doubt that none of us slip through that God is the ultimate catcher he holds on to all of us with a power and a strength that only comes from God himself and so as we stand and prepare for the benediction let us remember that it's God it's not our strength, it's not our money, it's not our good looks, it's not how smart we are that really matters. It's our faith that holds us, because God's got all the rest. So let God lead you. Don't look for evidence. Just believe that he controls your life. Now raise your hand. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come in faith on the Sunday after Easter, on the Sunday after Resurrection Sunday, to confess and believe in your power, in your might, in your strength, in your hope, that no matter what our situations, we won't doubt you. We won't question you. We'll depend on you, and we'll wait for you because we know that you'll come for us. So bless us now, Lord, as we depart from this sanctuary and celebrate the rest of our lives as we move into the room for our business meeting, as we prepare to go out to dinner or to go home and watch TV or go home and take a nap. Let us be changed and remember that there's no doubt on who we are and whose we are. It's in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ that we all say, amen. Amen? Amen? No doubt.